become a master of it, which right, is pretty right. cool. All right. So um, I think that covers it. Do you have any additional info or comments? Um, well, no. Well, actually, one thing. So there is one thing to be said about this, though. Right. Just because you enjoy doing it doesn't mean that at some point it won't feel like it's work. Uh, with a lot of these oh, yeah. things, you know, it can become pretty repetitive and mundane and maybe you're kind of doing the same thing over and over again. So at that point, you're like, man, it's not as enjoyable as it used to be. But then I ask you, what is the alternative? You're going to be doing something that you actually don't like and is also repetitive. Mm -hmm. So obviously with everything, there's always a balance. I can't just tell you that it's all going to be sunshine and rainbows because it's not. But it beats the alternative. So... Again, find that thing. What the f is we doing? Good morning, everybody. This is Mike, Shots of Info, back at it again. Uh, quick disclaimer, this is just for entertainment purposes only. So don't take everything as an expert advice. Uh, take what you know, resonates with you and leave the rest. And yeah, let's get the show on the road. All right, let's begin. So on the topics we have for the foundation section, what is our niche, right? So we talked a little bit about that in the past related to fitness, but now we're going to talk about this in terms of just our general life. On the fitness section, we have stress eating and on the finance, we have news updates. And that's that. Sweet, sweet, sweet. All right, so let's start this. Um, so I think it's pretty clear what's your niche, right? We spoke about the niche, you know, like finding the niche it, when you are a trainer. It makes you a little bit more valuable and also stand out because you're, you know, good at that specific thing. So what, what would you say is your niche, like, in life, like, as a person, as a man, as a human being? Part well, of I mean... <laughs> just I mean, like I just spoke about yesterday, being a personal trainer, right? That's part and parcel of where I'm basically solidifying, not necessarily my whole definition as a human, but right now in these earlier stages of my life is developing. Mm -hmm. I'm a personal trainer, right? And I have side things that I like to do, right? Trading and investing, doing this. Um, but yeah, that's what I say with my niche is. So you would say being a personal trainer is your niche, something that you would always come back to, right? Yeah, man. I mean, like I enjoy fitness and I enjoy helping people to become the best versions of themselves. Mm -hmm. And I don't really think that's ever going to change. Maybe the way I go about it might change, but it's, I, I doubt that it will ever not be what I like to do in some way, shape or form. That's actually nice. That's really good. Um, when it comes to me, I think it took me a while to figure this out, but I, I was actually thinking about it, uh, meditating about this, uh, because I chose the topics. I was like, what is it? And I came to the conclusion that is uh, teaching or giving back or being an instructor. I really, it's something that um, for the past year, almost two years now, I really found enjoyable. Believe me or not, if you were to ask me like three years ago whether I consider myself a good teacher, because like, um, I always been like, you know, like, it's intelligent, it's studious, up, up, uh, applied the student in all aspects of that. And in, in during high school or even in college, like a lot of my friends, they usually ask me, ask them to tutor or whatever. And I used to be really bad at it, like really, really suck. I used to hate it. And once I started instructing, I started a volunteering job as an instructor. I really found, you know, fulfilling. And I see why a lot of people choose to go with that career with that path regardless of why uh it's not like well paid and so i would say that my niche is being an instructor is tutoring teaching my knowledge just exposing my knowledge out there right and another thing that i really like to do is communication so teaching and just talking about a certain topic that i'm knowledgeable of i really enjoy doing that and i find ways um for me it's like easy to understand the perspective of like somebody who doesn't understand it well a certain way, I can adapt really quick to their way that might function better. Like, you know, like for example, like some kids, they um, learn visually, some others, they need 
just practice, 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 see different exercises and others that, you know, just reading or writing, they learn better. So for me, I have found like um, my job also include, you know, it's instructing and I have found really, really uh, joy on that. It's not something that I would do long term. Definitely, I would keep it on the side. But, you know, it's something that I will always come back to, like regardless of my economy, regardless where I end up in life or how high in my career I go or how far I go in my career. It's something that I would always try to come back to. So maybe like when I'm tearing my, on my, on my spare hours, it's, it's really enjoyable. So definitely look into that. Something, like I said, it took me a while to figure it out. I figured it out when I was, what, like 20 years old, 20, 21. And I, I know- too, though. No, but you figured it out way earlier, like when you were in high school and so. Hmm. Um, so yeah, I mean, like, honestly, I wouldn't say that, you know, you have to rush to find what that niche is for you. Oh yeah, that's uh, true. Right, like, we're <clears throat> obviously tailoring this to a younger audience, but, you know, older people do listen or have a tendency of listening as well. Um, your niche can come about at any time. It, it really is just a combination of you being good at something and simultaneously enjoying it. Um, and oftentimes when it's up happening is that your niche is, is li it's usually right in front of you, but you never yeah. really pursue it, right? You just think, oh, that's just something that I do. And right. you never really think of how you can actually put that into action or try to monetize it or monetize. try to make something out of it so that you can continue to do that and you know it pay for your livelihood it sustain <laughs> you um so i would definitely look into just like the things that you enjoy doing and like really just sitting down and seeing how exactly can i build this out so i can continue to do this and maybe you know make this into something that can sustain me long term absolutely and like I was mentioning before, like a lot of people choose to go with the teaching career, uh, becoming uh -huh. teachers, even though it's not the most well-paid job anywhere, to be honest. Like if you look globally, like usually teachers are not very well-paid. And uh -huh. I feel like this should be compensated a little bit more because at the end of the day, our kids, well, I don't have kids, but our future kids, not the kids, not yet, correct. Uh, they spend a lot of time uh, looking up to the teacher so they are a huge huge influence especially like you know during those early years they have a huge mm -hmm. impact in the way that they act the morals that they carry on as well as uh, the knowledge that they you know learn so they should definitely have a better compensation in my opinion and it is very fulfilling it is you know just seeing how much some kids grow and how much some kids you know challenge themselves they work hard it's really fulfilling and i i don't know i never would have found that i enjoy doing that to be honest if it wasn't for like one volunteering opportunity that came i came across and i just did it to be honest just for uh, to be honest to be honest i did it just to put it on my resume and end up doing it for like now i still volunteer with them which is crazy and even though i have a job i still volunteer make the time because i enjoy doing it and, you know, honestly, now that I think about it, right, like personal training, you know, is me teaching people. So in a sense, I am an instructor as well. So I can, I can just take what you're saying and apply it to personal training. It's just that personal training is a little bit more specific, right? Right. Just right. dealing with fitness. But well, yeah, mine, I, mine is also, uh, no, actually, mine, mine is a little bit broad, usually, because I tutor a few kids. I'm tutoring my class and also like math. And I love math, so it's, you know, seeing how... It's right there, right? It goes hand in hand. Yeah. And, well, I do teach coding, programming, which, you know, it's very useful. And I wish somebody... I had that when I was their age. You know what I mean? Because, like, I never yeah. got influenced or I never got... Knew what coding was until I was 18, 19 years old when I started my mm -hmm. major. Right, right. Yeah, man. I think um, that's about it. Mm. Yeah. And we Find your niche. About... Take your time. Don't over... Don't rush don't rush it because it honestly it's usually looking you straight in the face and the only thing you have to do is just literally just sit down write down the things you enjoy doing and then just make out a plan yeah and be be the best at it too because like if you if that's your niche and you enjoy doing it 
see opportunities like like I said, uh, volunteering. Maybe you can find a job related to it, even if it's not related to your major. Maybe you can find something on the side, something that brings you know fulfillment to your life because that's your niche. You just enjoy doing it, and you're really good at it. And we talked about this yesterday a little bit more expanded. You know how you become a master of it, which that's is pretty cool. cool. All right. So um, I think that covers it. Do you have any additional info or comments? Um, well, no. Well, actually, one thing. So there is one thing to be said about this, though. Right. Just because you enjoy doing it doesn't mean that at some point it won't feel like it's work. Uh, with a lot of these oh, yeah. things, you know, it can become pretty repetitive and mundane, and maybe you're kind of doing the same thing over and over again. So at that point, you're like, man, it's not as enjoyable as it used to be. But then I ask you, what is the alternative? You're going to be doing something that you actually don't like and is also repetitive. Mm -hmm. So obviously with everything, there's always a balance. I can't just tell you that it's all going to be sunshine and rainbows because it's not. But it beats the alternative. So again, find that thing, build out a plan, and see where it goes. Well, and if it doesn't work, then try something else. Yeah, well, um, what I can uh, kind of add up to what you just said is that a niche doesn't necessarily have to be your career or doesn't have to be what you do for a living. It can mm -hmm. be just something that you do on the side with some limited time. You just enjoy doing it for the sake for the sake of it. Like it, it doesn't have to be like a work related. It can be something that maybe like uh, collecting items or or um, playing games, like something you know that you enjoy doing it, and because mm -hmm. of you. Or maybe also with like people, like it can be also mm -hmm. be in the sports, you know. Like a niche doesn't necessarily has to be work related. Uh, definitely, yeah. you should try to monetize it because you know you need a means of living, especially if you're trying to do a little bit or spend more time doing it. But at mm -hmm. the end of the day, a niche or something that you're really good at doesn't have to be necessarily work. So I feel like if you treat it that way, uh, more opportunities come your way as well as you're not going to get bored because you're not practicing like every single day. Maybe it can also be like a scapegoat uh, from work. So escape from work where you can do it like, you know. On your, on your Way to decompress, right? And not uh, stress out. Exactly. So um, Which I, brings us right next in, right into our next oh, topic. Boom, boom, boom. Yes. Go into it. All right. So the next topic here on the fitness se section is stress eating. So... This is a major thing that I uh, that I encounter with people at the gym. Mm -hmm. um, regardless of what is triggering the stress, oftentimes what ends up happening is that people start mindlessly eating. And right. that's where they usually start packing on the weight. It doesn't, like, it, it. it's an unconscious thing that ends up happening. And it's only until the, it becomes too late, that's when you realize that the whole thing kind of just caught up to you, right? Um, during this whole, you know, pandemic situation, a lot of people ended up stressing often and they were home doing nothing. So that compounded the, the effect of what was happening with the food, over consuming, not doing anything, stressing out. That's, you know, it's not particularly good from a hormonal perspective, but right. just from a physical perspective, from your body, in, from your body image, you know, you pack on a lot of weight and, you know. You look worse, and then that makes you stress out, which makes you eat more, which makes you look <laughs> even worse. Right. So, you know, there's definitely something to be said about stress eating. Um, have you ever stressed eat before? Oh, no. I think everybody has been in there, man. Everybody has been in there. I tend to eat uh, more when I'm on finals season or mm -hmm. midterm season or when I have a project due, like, soon. And I noticed this because I – tend myself to like be trying to do my project but at the same time going back and forth between now that I'm here at home go to the to the kitchen really fast and just look for something and sometimes there's like you know when you go to the fridge there's a lot of things but you don't know exactly what you want it's like do I want sweet do I want something salty or do I want like a juice or you know that I feel like that's when you kind of realize that you are eating just because of the stress because mm -hmm. you really don't have anything to satisfy with but you know that you're craving something and it's just because of the stress that um that you're going or dealing with so yes mm -hmm. i've been in that situation and i actually gained some 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 fatties 
during this quarantine as well. I actually went to check today with my physician. I put up to up to like six, seven pounds during this quarantine, which I'm trying to, you know, get ready. Shake to it off. 2021, absolutely. But sure. no, no, no. Uh, I think stress eating is something that um, whether you have a balanced life or not, you will come across uh, with it someday. And mm -hmm. the best advice I can give you is to be ready and prepare for it. Um, try to right, go so, the snacks, you know? Yeah, so that's that's that brings us right into the next one that I want to talk about. Go ahead. It's going to happen. That, that's kind of the problem. It's eventually going to happen to you. And, you know, you can say that, you know, oh, I'm going to use all the willpower, willpower that I have and I'm not going to stress eat, whatever the case might be. And it doesn't even have to be stress eating. It could just be eating out of boredom. That's another big one. Um, um, also, when you're depressed, when you're sad. Depression, right? But I would kind of put that together with the stress, stress, <laughs> depression, uh, boredom. Like a lot of these things tend to happen often to us. And, you know, you just start eating and you start mindlessly eating and you just mm -hmm. keep eating and eating and eating until eventually, you know, you look in the mirror and you're like, wow, um, well, that's not what I thought was happening, but clearly it's right. exactly what happened, right? So one of the tips that I would definitely suggest when it comes to stress eating is to, well, make sure that whatever is available to you, try to make it as healthy of an option as possible. Exactly. Um, get rid of any of those processed snacks, any mm. of the, the, you know, really sugary uh, drinks or anything that, you know, you know is unhealthy. Most of the time, most people know what the unhealthy things are because it's blasted out pretty much everywhere. Like uh, things that are high in sugar, things that are processed, junk food. These things, most people know what they are, but, you know, just because they're so addicting, they still buy it. It's right? the salt in it. It's the sodium. Sodium. I mean, it's, 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 it's everything, right? It's mm -hmm. the way these snacks and, and all these junk foods are created. It's to just make you feel good for eating them in the moment. Right. The, okay, yeah, that's true. That goes back to like the marketing that we talked about in the past, right? Like how, you know, society has constructed a way of marketing that we buy things that we don't need. When it comes to food, you know, there are scientists that are at work to you know, genetically modify these foods such that they trigger emotions, they trigger hormonal responses, they trigger a bunch of different things that make you want to eat this because it makes you feel good in the moment. Mm -hmm. Isn't that your right? job? <laughs> like your major? Nutrition? Nutrition, right? <laughs> so to that end, you know, you have to be really diligent about these things that you keep around because it's, you think it's just food, but it, it, actually what it is, it's a drug. Mm -hmm. and it's so easy to get addicted to it simply because you need food to live if you stop eating food well i mean you can last a while without eating food but that's the conversation the water. Time, yeah right you yeah. can't live without water for as long but with when it comes to food you need food to survive and you know it could be really easy to trick yourself into buying the unhealthy stuff saying mm -hmm. that that i need food to survive so you're going to eat the unhealthy stuff because it's food in any case, keep healthy snacks at home. Try to limit the bad ones that you buy. Um, one of the things that I learned from one of my classes is that you can actually, if there's no way to, for you to control, like let's say hypothetically you're not doing the grocery shopping at home mm -hmm. or you, know, you can talk to whoever does it, have them organize uh, you know, your snacks or your treats or whatever in such a way where you make the unhealthy options difficult to reach. So hypothetically, let's say for you to get a, um, some cookies, you're going to have to put it on the highest shelf possible so that the only way for you to get it is to get a chair and then put something on the chair in order to reach it. That makes it much more difficult and probably less prone for you to go get it. That's true. Another, another thing that you can do is actually put the healthy snacks in front of the, the unhealthy ones, right? Mm -hmm. Put the, the unhealthy ones farther back into the cabinet. Put the healthy ones in the front. That way, the first thing you reach for is a healthy one. Those are really good ones. Yeah, I definitely agree with you that, you know, it eventually going to come. You just got to be prepared for it. Mm -hmm. But um, Or just I, don't buy the snacks at all if you can help it. <laughs> no, but sometimes that's also like the convenience of today, you know, with all the delivery companies that out there. 
you have mm -hmm. food available at the palm of your hand, which makes it even worse to stay away from it, especially if you have like, you know, uh, subscriptions or, you know, discounts and all this sort of marketing there, there is, you're eventually going to be tempted to go for it and just click in. Also, it affects your pocket in the long run because the yep. little things are going to be adding up. Believe it or not, every 50 cents, 25 cents, E at top. If you do the math in the longer term, the amount that you spend on a yearly basis, it's huge comparing to something that you would have spent uh, if you cook at home or do something healthier. Mm -hmm. So yeah, man, um, just be diligent about the stress eating. It's going to happen at some point. The best yeah, I, I would suggest... Active. Go ahead. Actually, what would you say about like you're not being hungry after a post workout? No, that's perfectly fine. Your body needs energy, so mm -hmm. um, I would suggest that in that sense, if you can actually get food into your system, like real food, like real mm -hmm. good protein, like chicken or uh, meats, fish, whatever, that would be ideal. But if you can't, you know, protein powder is usually a nice Absolutely. supplement. Our granola bars. Granola bars work too. <laughs> okay. Very good. Do you have any extra stuff? No, that's it, man. It's... Just, uh, it's going to happen. Don't worry about it. Just try to prepare so that when it does happen, you're not just, oh, I, the only thing I have in my fridge is ice cream, cookies, and literally everything that's unhealthy. Oh, absolutely. Just, you're going to eat Perfect. all of it and then you're going to regret it. Definitely, definitely. Uh, you know what else? Uh, I've been applying it because I've been doing um, intermittent fasting for the past mm. couple of weeks is something that you recommended me like a long time ago with the water and the sodium and the magnesium and the potassium in, mm. it. you know, some mm. minerals to you. To do you, to you give your body when you not in taking any food? It just makes you not feel so hungry. hungry. At times. Mm -hmm. So that's something that maybe you want to look into that as well. Or we can put it like in a separate topic then. You can yeah, we can talk about ways to more. kind of blunt or appetite, mm -hmm. uh, how to control cravings or how to control your appetite. Yeah, indeed. All right. So it doesn't get too long. Let's move on to some news updates. There's actually a lot going on this week. It's been a crazy week in the market in the, in the United States as well. And it's only seven days of the 2021. So let's see what it has to offer this New Year's. But with uh, some news, clean energy, financial, and potty stocks were up since Georgia Senate's runoff indicated, you know, a blue wave. So right now, the, um, the Congress will be for Democrats. So a lot of things can be passed, and businesses such as this are going to be the, the bigger winners. So I have some notable, notable mentions. So the marijuana ETF MG got a 11-month high and close up 8%. Also, MJ or MG? MJ. MJ. Yes, MJ. Good, thank you for correcting me on that. And also New York Governor Cuomo announced a proposal to legalize and regulate cannabis in New York uh, 2021. So definitely look into that. Uh, maybe it will About happen. Better pop off, bro. <laughs> yeah, so, you know, it's a, it's a really good time to, if you haven't buy any stocks on on, on, you know, this alternative Marijuana. agriculture, just to call it fancy. Alternative, uh, alternative, right? Alternative, alternative agriculture. Correct. It's a really good time to be, um, you know, to invest right now. So some mm -hmm. notable wheat names include uh, Canopy Growth Corp, ticker symbol CGC. Then we have Cronus Group, which is C-R-O-N, Growth Generations, G-R-W-G. So those are some companies that I'm looking at really good potential. And actually this week they rose to ultimate high. I personally invest on Aurora, Aurora cannabis, which is ACB. Um, it's, it's, you know, it's not that expensive and you can invest with a few bucks. And also you also have the partial, the partial. Partial shares. Okay. Partial shares, correct. Then we also have uh, energy. So energy has been a good players because Democrats, they tend to be environmental friendly. So clean energy has been on the heights this week since um, Wednesday. So we have Sunrun, 
which ticker symbol is R-U-N, been up almost 20% since uh, Wednesday. Sun Power, ticker symbol SPWR, and Phase Energy, E-N-P-H. So you can check them out and very good potentials as well. And then on the financial sectors as well, because of the talks of a another stimulus package, especially for the financial sector, we have the Goldman Sachs, uh, Bank of America, and Wells Fargo. Ticker symbols Goldman Sachs, GS, Bank of America, BAC, and Wells Fargo, WFC. All right. Crypto continues to impress us. Uh, yesterday, Thursday, it peak ultimate heights of 40K. At the moment of this recording right now, it's sitting on $36,000. But, you know, there's a lot of potentials. And like we mentioned yesterday, it has a potential to keep going and going, going up. So if you haven't invested on it yet, maybe it will be a good time to do so right now. But, you know, or you can wait for a, a bigger deal. I personally, I'm going to start. Uh, I mean, I started at 31000 and I'm going to increase my position now. Because why not? I don't know, man. <laughs> it's not stopping. It's not stopping, and there's no sign that it's slowing down, you know. It just keeps going up. Mm -hmm. Very good. All right, so what happened on Tuesday, you know, with all the rally? And um, so one woman is in critical conditions after being shot uh, and in the riot po police. And the riot police, the National Guard, and the FBI were all called. Now, Congress tried to channel the energy when it recorded. Uh, you know, when it got back on their feet last night and ratified Biden's electoral college victory. So Biden is officially uh, the winner of that election. So he will be inaugurated on the 20th. All right. So the tech heavy Nasdaq index dropped because of regulation fears. Uh, we saw that happening yesterday and today, th um, Thursday, it recuperated a little bit. But Aurora and Canopy surge because of legalizations Nation, nationwide, all right? So um, some things that some CEOs actually mentioned is that JP Morgan, JP Morgan CEO Jamie Dimon said, our electoral leaders have a responsibility to call for an end to the violence, accept the results, and as our democracy has for hundreds of years, support the peaceful transition of power. Also, Tim Cook, he also uh, said a statement said today marks a sad and shameful chapter in the national history. So this just shows that, you know, corporates and business people are engaged and aware what is going on around, um, around, around our country. And just to be a little bit, uh, uh, just in addition, Trump's social media got locked 12 hours on Twitter and 24 hours on Facebook, which I found really interesting. Oh, yeah, our president was kicked out of the media for a few hours. So, <laughs> all right. Anyways, oh, so this is interesting. U.S. officials may expand the blacklist of companies prohibited in the U.S. to the U.S. investor. So in the stock market here in the U.S., Alibaba and Tencent could be in the bunch. So Alibaba dropped. I don't know if you saw the charts. Today was awful for Alibaba. So the first back though. It bounced a little bit, but it, that drop was... No, huge. it went from down negative three up to like almost 1%, and then it dropped a little bit more. Oh, I have not checked. But yeah, so it might expand. It might also... Remember how the New York Stock Exchange said, okay, uh, um, we're going to kick out three telecoms. Then the next day on Tuesday said, never mind. Guess what? They're going to kick them off again? Yes. So less than two days um, after revising the initial decisions on the Chinese telecom stocks, the New York Exto um, Stock Exchange once again changed its mind and it's going to kick out, kicked out of their listing three telecom com uh, Chinese companies. So these include China Mobile, China Telecom, and China U Unicom. So starting on Monday at 4 p.m., this, um, these listings are not, these companies are no longer going to be able to be traded on the New York Stock Exchange. So Which the New York is not to say that you can't trade them anymore, and we can save that for a different topic of what mm -hmm. happens when companies get delisted. Okay, yeah, true. 
The New York Stock Exchange says that this decision was spurred by guidance issued from the Treasury Department Office of Foreign Assets Control. Honestly, at this point, <laughs> even though this is official, they changed their mind three times. So who knows? Mm -hmm. All right. So moving on. So going um, across the ocean, ye, uh, the European Union officials approved Moderna's vaccine for the widespread uh, distribution. So now they have um, two vaccines in the U uh, European Union. So Pfizer's and Moderna's. They both receive authorization at this point. Pfizer's got its approval uh, before then here in the U.S. back in December 27th. And as of now, the U um, EU has pre-ordered more than 160 million doses, the shot, the two-shot vaccine. So it's uh, two doses that you have to, that everybody has to take for, for Moderna. Have you taken the vaccine? All right. No. Are you planning to? Uh, I mean, at some point, but I kind of want to weigh out to see what's going to happen here with everybody else that's taking the vaccine right now. Okay. Very good. In other news, guess who's the richest person in the world now? My boy, Elon Musk. Yes, my boy did it. He's at the top of the top, and he's one of my um, idols. I wouldn't say idols. Like I really admire him, his work and his passion for technology. So congrats to my boy Elon. Uh, he deserves it because he never he was never about profits. It's all about his his dream, Mission. his passion dream to go to them to Mars. You know, and I feel mm -hmm. like that's what every company should be uh, should be all about. So that's why it's some reasons I admire his work. Anyways, New York uh, Andrew Cuomo once again announced his support for the legalization of mobile sports betting in the states. So believe it or not soon we'll, we'll be able to bet on car races. <laughs> I find that interesting. But yes. All right. And then we have gaming company Roblox raised $520 million at a $29 billion valuation. So it plans to go public soon via direct listing. They haven't announced which, um, uh, which what do you call it? Which index they're going to be at, but it's coming soon. Definitely has a lot of potential. Uh, then we have Oatly, the popular oat milk brand, backed from Ofra, uh, backed by Ofra, is reportedly planning to in a 2021 IPO as well, and that could raise one billion dollars for them. And another really interesting that I have been looking in this past week is plant-based meat uh, companies. Mm -hmm. So Beyond Meat. Uh, Impossible Foods really put a lot of potential in them, and actually, Impossible Foods cuts prices for distribu distributors for the second time in a year for better compete the beef prices. So they're definitely trying to make the competition and really kind of um, what do you call it? Replace meat overall. Because I don't know if you have that chance to actually taste it. It tastes like meat, like it literally like eating meat. Mm -hmm. Uh, which I found interesting, and I feel like, you know, a lot, there's this movement about, you know, like, not killing animals and stuff like that. It could be a thing in moving forward as well. Yeah, All right. For sure. Now, the U.S. report jobless claims this morning, uh, well, on Thursday morning, uh, with results showing that 787,000 7, 8, total claims. So it's better predictions. The data shows a 126 claim drop. The numbers of individuals receiving unemployment benefit also fell uh, 420,000 to 2 million, but it still remains above pre pandemic level. So, you know, a few things uh -huh. right there. Yeah. What well, other than that, uh, Boeing, that, that aerial, um, that airplane man manufacturer, the Justice Department fined Boeing 2.5 billion today to settle charges of the concealing information about two deadly Boeing 737 MAX plane crashes in 2018. If you remember, these crashes were everywhere. Boeing literally dropped from like a $400 trading stock to 126 where it hasn't passed like that $200. I lost a lot of money with Boeing, but I still have faith in this company. Why? Because there's only two manufacturers in the world. And once, you know, uh, 
once um, everything starts normalizing a little bit better, people can start traveling more, there's going to be a lot of potential for that. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? You gotta have faith in this company sometimes. But yeah, that's pretty much it for my news report. Uh, I found this news really interesting. A lot going on everywhere in the world. And yep, what do you got to yeah. add? I know that you have really good gains from yes from today. Yeah, so um, so going into so what's happening with Neo is that there's this event happening on Saturday, the 9th of January. Um, and what's happening is called a pre-anticipatory run. So a lot of people are expecting that good things are going to come out of it. Mm -hmm. so they're pumping a lot of money into it before the event. And it's looking like the event is going to actually yield some really good stuff for the company. Mm -hmm. And given the fact that Tesla has been running ever since that S&P 500, 500 inclusion, which is contrary to what people were saying that, you know, it was going to cool off yeah. and pull back. No, it just consolidated and slowly but surely started inching its way up until it hit 700. Now it's we're sitting above. 100. Now it's we're above sitting, 800. It's just, yeah, it's sitting on 800 right now. It's mm -hmm. Surprising. So, it's, uh, it's the future, man. So, yeah. But, yeah. That's so, it, man. Um, everything's looking good. Trading went well. Can't complain. Just waiting for the next day. Just waiting for the markets to open again. It's going to try to be better tomorrow than I was today. Nice. Really happy for you, man. I'm still, I actually lost some money with the market. I bet against the market yesterday, took some losses. I did look in profits with uh, uh, betting against gold, which was really good. Right now, I'm going to swing trade is triple Q. We'll we see how it goes, but I will try to balance it a little bit with another company that I'm looking at. But that's pretty much it. I'm actually planning to trade Neo as well. And I was looking into getting on it, but it's a, it's a little bit overpriced right now. I would wait until <laughs> Monday after yeah. Monday. There'll I'll probably be a nice little Monday. cool off on after Monday. Maybe we'll see. Yeah, definitely, definitely. All right. So that's pretty much it for today. We will see you next week with some new shots of infos and peace. Oh.